Let's quickly talk about crop factor when it comes to buying a camera. You may have heard the term crop factor floating about when you've been reading online camera reviews or talking to friends about cameras that you want to buy, but what exactly is crop factor when it comes to photography? Now, basically, apart from causing many arguments about which is better, um, it all boils down to the size of the sensor within your camera. So we've already talked about what cameras and how they differ, such as a professional camera and a full frame prosumer camera, that kind of thing. But really, how will it affect your photos and how will it affect what you buy? Let's start off by explaining basically what it is. A full frame camera, when you hear the terminology full frame digital camera, all people are referring to is that it's uh, the same size as 35 millimeter film. If you've ever used uh, a DSLR in the past, uh, sorry, not a DSLR, an SLR, film SLR in the past, you remember that you used to use a roll of 35 millimeter film and the size of that negative that you used to get back with your prints is the size of the sensor in a full frame camera. Now, when you talk about a cropped sensor, that means it's a much smaller sensor and it could be anything from a 1.3 times to a 1.6 times. Um, let me just explain that quickly. Uh, when you've got a 35 millimeter sensor, as in the Canon 5D or a film SLR, with a cropped sensor, the sensor becomes slightly smaller. So the image hitting that sensor is still the same size, but it's taking less of the image onto the actual recording sensor. Um, to give you a couple of examples, the Nikon D3 is a full frame camera. The Canon 5D is a full frame camera. Um, and there's a Sony camera out at the moment with a full frame. They're still fairly new at the moment, but obviously more manufacturers are gonna bring them on board. But the 1D Mark III that we've got here is actually a crop camera. Even though it's a professional camera, it's still got a crop factor of 1.3 times. Um, and if you look at cameras such as the Nikon D70 or D60 or the Canon 450D or 50D, a lot of these cameras which are more of a prosumer level have a crop factor um, of 1.6 for Canon and 1.5 for Nikon. So that's going to affect your photos in some ways, but at the end of the day, what you've got to realize is that still, when you look through the camera, when you look through the viewfinder, that is what you're going to get as a photo. Regardless of the size of the sensor, what you see is pretty much what you're going to get. But just to illustrate the difference between a full frame camera and a 1.3 times camera, I'm just going to take two photos of the screen here and just show you the difference, how it can actually affect your photos. I'm going to try not to move my chair and just take two photographs. I've got the cameras all set up to get the exposure right. So let's start off with the full frame camera. We're going to take a photo of the screen there just to see how much we can get in. So we'll take that there. And I'm getting the whole screen in plus quite a bit around the outskirts as well. So let's now put that to one side and put the same lens, 50 millimeter lens, on the 1D Mark III, which has a crop factor of 1.3. Let's see what difference that makes. Okay, that's quite a bit of difference. I've just about got the whole screen in. A big, big difference. So we'll look at those on the computer in a minute, but basically the 5D with the full frame sensor allows me to get a lot more of the image in. It's actually a big wider, a wider field of view by, one, by 0.3 times. And if you imagine, if I had a 1.6 times, I'd be squashed even further because the 1.3 just about got the screen in, but a 1.6 times would probably crop right into the actual, uh, the actual screen itself. So when you're buying a camera, when you're buying uh, any prosumer or professional grade camera, have a think about how the sensor in that camera will affect your shots and how it'll affect what lenses you have to buy. Because a 50 millimeter lens that I've just used there on a 1.5 Nikon D60 will become a 75 millimeter, even though it's not really, they, they use this to actually describe the, the focal length of the lens with the sensor. It, a 50 millimeter effectively becomes a 75 millimeter because you're cropping right in, which is what the same as what a, a 75 millimeter lens would do on a full frame camera. It all gets a bit confusing, but all I would suggest you do is when you've found the camera that you like, has the features and functions that you want, ask or find out what sensor size it has and what the crop factor is. Uh, and if you have say a, a 1.6 crop factor, then you're gonna to wanna to look at a wide angle lens such as a 10 to 22 millimeter lens. These have been specially designed for cropped cameras. So you actually get a wider field of view and they're compensating for that smaller sensor. If you go for a full frame camera, then obviously the standard lenses that you get will be exactly what they are. So a, a 24 millimeter lens will stay a 24 millimeter lens, a 50 millimeter will stay a 50 millimeter and uh, any, any length after that, it stays exactly as it is. 
whereas a 50 millimeter becomes a, a one point uh, becomes a 75 millimeter on a Nikon 1.5 crop camera. All sounds very confusing, but at the end of the day, all you've got to realize is when you look through the camera and take the photo or see what you're going to take a photo of, that's what you're going to get. So if you've got a cropped camera and you want to get more in the frame, just move back slightly and you've got the equivalent of what a, a, a non-cropped full frame camera would give you. So just bear that in mind. But now let's go and have a look at those photos just to show you the difference in real time. So here we got both photos loaded into Canon's DPP. Now I'm not worried about the white balance at the moment or anything like that. I'm just concerned or just want to show you the difference between a cropped camera and a uh, full frame camera. So here we have the Canon 1D Mark III image and you can see I've just about got the whole of the screen in. So we got pretty close there. If we look at the 5D with a full frame, you can see just how much difference it makes. Now that's only 0.3 of a difference, but you can see we've got a lot more of the actual screen in and the surrounding area. So taking that into account, you imagine the difference between a, a full frame camera and a, a 1.6 cropped factor camera or a 1.5 from Nikon. The difference would be even greater. So you have to bear this in mind when you're looking at buying a camera and also what lenses you're getting to go with it. But at the end of the day, like I keep saying, what you see through the camera is pretty much what you get. But this is just to illustrate the difference and how the crop factor works. So there you go. That's the difference in real time of what a cropped image will actually look like compared to a full frame image. And that's how much extra you will get in a photo. But if you think that you need to have a professional grade camera such as the 1D Mark III, Bear in mind, it's still got a cropped factor lens, a uh, crop factor sensor. Now that can be quite good in some respects because what's happening is some lenses have a, a bit of chromatic aberration or uh, slight blurriness on the edges of the photo, if you know what I mean. Um, you, you can get some fall off at wide angle lenses. Um, so let's say you've got a 16 millimeter lens on your camera and when you look at it on the computer, the edges are slightly blurred because it's uh, maybe a substandard lens or your camera just can't cope with that quality or whatever. But what's happening with a cropped lens, you're actually cropping through that bad section of the lens and you're getting what's called a sweet spot in the middle. So a lot of people actually prefer a cropped camera, a cropped sensor and a smaller sensor because you're losing that bad part of the, the glass around the outside and you're just firing straight through the sweet spot. So many people buy a cropped camera purely for that reason because they know they're going to get slightly better quality images. If you're going to go for a full frame camera, you better make sure that you get high quality lenses. Um, such as the, the DX range, I think it's on Nikon or the L glass on the Canon lenses. Make sure that you get highest quality lenses you can because a, a full frame sensor will show up any imperfections in bad quality glass. But just to prove that you don't need to have these kind of cameras, I've, I've been using the One Series from Canon for about three years now, four years, uh, and I love them. They are solid, solid construction. Um, you can see partly why I use these because they've got such incredible uh, speed, they're very robust and I've used them for, for weddings for quite a long time now, but I don't necessarily need a full, uh, sorry, a professional grade camera anymore. So what I'm doing, I've actually sold this camera. Um, I'm going to miss it because it's a fantastic camera, but I'm downgrading, if you like, or a lot of people would see it as downgrading to a more semi-professional camera, the 5D Mark II, purely because it suits the kind of photography that I'm going to be doing from now on. This is for mainly sports and um wildlife photography that kind of thing because it's super super fast very robust it can take photos in the rain it's it's very very professional grade uh, whereas the 5d mark ii i'm going to be using it more for landscapes stock photography portraits that kind of thing so don't always feel that you have to get the best kind of camera that you have to you don't have to go for professional quality as long as you get a camera that does everything you need does everything you want and you can take great photos with it go for it it doesn't matter so at the end of the day just feel happy with the camera when it's in your hands with the ergonomics, look at the crop factor and just make sure it's what you want.